Hello everyone, I'm Man Flanges. Dastrazak here. And this is the Mousecast podcast for the week of November 14th, 2024. Um, this week we're going to be talking about, is 2024 the year of carbon fiber mice? We got a few that we're gonna, new releases that we're going to talk about. And also, um, how about... Um, Boardsy had a product idea that's actually pretty cool for a mouse pad with a screen on it behind it. So we're going to talk about that. We'll take a look at skill-based matchmaking versus engagement optimized matchmaking. Which one is better for you, if either of them. And then we'll also take a look at the best deals that we found on AliExpress for the 11.11 sale and see what got us to cave. Yes, sir. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I picked up some things, but yeah, we'll get to that. So to start off, let's go to... Um, the Ponage Carbon Fiber Trinity, this was just released. Uh, this was pretty cool. So, Ponage, right, they have the Stormbreaker, and now they have the Stormbreaker CF, which is carbon fiber instead of magnesium. Um, but they've had the Stormbreaker for, like, what, year, year and a half now? Yeah, at least that long. And now they're reviving the Ponage Sim Shape which is famous for being a darn near Viper Mini clone. Have you used a Ponage Sim before? This is a mouse that I would see, I would hear rumblings about after coming back to the mouse scene more recently than when this was like featured. I've always wondered about it, but I've never never touched one, never tried it. Yeah, I haven't touched one either. I know um, everyone's like, is that a GPX clone? Is that a Viper Mini clone? And it's like, <laughs> not but i do wonder the side curvature is like one of the key things like the glory uh, you look at like elo shapes and you look at if we look at something like the um del not an argument with a guy on reddit today but if you look at the deluxe m600 it looks really similar to holy crap this website's slow for me it's really similar to to the viper mini but they don't at all feel similar i don't know why elo shapes is like not loading for me well anyway you can take my word for it yeah that's like the beauty and the issue with elo shapes is it, it's a wonderful site to compare mice but then you just can't fully know until it's in your hand yeah um i know uh have you seen that uh, is it ratings 3d mouse they have a 3d comparison tool have you seen this oh i haven't no yeah this is pretty cool so this is like Neck, back when Nastric, Nace, Nace, Nastric, whatever his, the, the owner guy of Elo Shapes, when he announced 2.0, I thought it would be like 3D scans, but mm -hmm. um, he did introduce a lot of cool things, like the find similar feature is really cool. Um, anyway. How in-depth is the mouse list here? Better than you think for being ratings. <laughs> So you can take like two mice and you can stack them on top of one another. So you can see the hump of the. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, solid. There you go. Yeah. Um, I don't know if. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. Um. They do have like top. Okay, this is pretty cool to be able to see. Again, you still don't. You know, like, what's best is, can I remove this and then go back to textured? Like, really being able to see that side curvature is pretty cool. I guess being able to see the skates is good, too. You know, a good bottom view tells a lot about a mouse. And not every, like, product photo has that. Um, no, but Amadeft will show you in his videos. He does a great <laughs> job with that. He, he really does. His comparisons on the little turntable are really nice. So, sorry, back to the... Um, I don't know if I should have shown that document, but oh well. Uh, back to this. Um, yeah, I think this is I think this is really cool. The price is 149. I think if you do yeah, if you do the black or the silver, it's 139 US. You can opt for holes or no holds on the side. Uh, you can show grip tape. I think it comes with grip tape, and then there's upcharges for different glass skates. Dude, Twenty dollar upcharge almost. It's crazy. That is crazy. I wonder if they still give you the PTFE ones. These do look nicely rounded. Dude, Ponage's website is so good. Yeah, it doesn't compare to anything else. Click on the glass gate one more time. It says PTF white included. 
And then you add, yeah, the glasses in addition to that. I think they still give you PTFE. Okay. Yeah. Um, go back to this. The nacho colorway is my favorite by far. Yeah, there's something about it that I... Maybe I... It's the computer rendering. Something about it doesn't seem... I don't know if like the buttons or the wheel, either the wheel needs to also be purple or the buttons need to be the accent color like black. I don't know. I haven't seen one in real life either. I hear they're really cool. So there's that. Yeah. I am actually a fan of this. I think this is pretty cool and a bit different. This is real final mouse aesthetic here, which honestly I'm not a fan. I'd rather just have nice smooth buttons, but it's not well, a it's like a Spider, like a black widow almost. Oh, or a snake? There's eyes and then fangs? Mm, yep. I don't know. Um, let's see, anything else major to talk about? Um, the carbon fiber material, it still is injection molded. It's not, so it's going to be like chopped similar to what Final Mouse is doing. Oh, 37 gram weight. That's pretty cool. I, I don't know if that's before skates. Um, still has their adjustable sensor position, which have you used an adjustable sensor position before? Nope, never have. Okay. So I have. I got a Stormbreaker like at release that was the olive color. I got a pretty cool serial number 0006. I got it from a dude on eBay who listed it like a day or two before the uh, official release. Like we had known about it and stuff, but... He said that his company worked with Ponage in, I think he said marketing or some, and they gave everyone in their company a mouse, and he was just selling his because he was like, this is worth way more money than <laughs> what he probably valued it at. Um, anyway, adjustable sensor position. It's not a total gimmick. You go farthest forward and then farthest back, there is definitely a noticeable difference. However, it's not something you should straight up just buy a mouse. Like, oh, I only buy mice with adjustable sensor. It's set it and forget it. So farthest forward, your mouse will feel a little bit more, not sensitive, but I would describe it as like eager, mm. particularly if you're a wrist aimer, right? Because that point is going to be further from your wrist. So, you know, moving your wrist 45 degrees is going to be a lar longer arc length if it's up here versus down here. So it feels like more eager, but the downside is it can also sometimes feel more jittery. I use a Viper V3 Pro at home a lot, and then at work I use the Hyperspeed, which has the sensor way the heck high up, and that's too high up for me. Um, you could get, like, really nerdy about, and, like, a really smooth situation, like a tracking aim training session, maybe you lower the sensor position, and then something more flick-heavy, you could raise it up, but I think there's a million variables, your pad, your skates, your centimeter 360, uh, your grip. These things matter more than sensor position. So, um, the yeah, long... I'll say, like, it's a cool feature to have. Set it and forget it seems like the way to go to me because I don't need one more thing to think about tweaking when I'm trying to get, like, a PR in Kovacs. And I know. What if I bump this, change FOV, move the sensor down? Yeah. That's a great feature to have. Was it Struth Gaming? Her... Someone, no, someone said that about it, Mouse Excel. They were like, don't download raw Excel if you're the kind of person who changes sensitivity other, every other game. It's way too many variables. So, yeah. I came away. I sold my Stormbreaker. Bottom line, uh, you can get used to any sensor position. It's really not critical. Yeah. Uh, master grade detailing. Okay. Their Ponage Zero sensor, which is a 3950. I love how they straight up, you know, nobody will admit that it's a Pixar sensor. <laughs> you know, no, like, nah, that's what it is. Yeah, okay, like yeah. Um, Glorious with the BAMF, the BAMF yeah. sensor. Yeah. It's a bad. Yeah. I'm on Opticals, baby. Uh, the best. They have lag free wireless. Yeah, they have their Pyramid Puck. So I believe Tech Power Up did a review of the Stormbreaker. And I don't, I don't think it was super positive. Uh, let's just jump to the conclusion. Very pricey. Pulling instability. That's right. Poor battery life. Mm. Charging cable. Who cares? Shell cutouts. Ergonomically questionable. That is nice. So that's fixed on this one. You can opt for solid sides with the new Stormbreaker. Uh, 
Trinity. Trinity is a cool name, too. Thank you for not doing another X3 alphanumeric. Um, yeah, the pulling instability was something that kind of stinks for a mouse that's expensive. And poor battery life. I don't know. Personally, I can live with it if it has a teeny tiny battery, but... Yeah, that was... Yeah, the... battery doesn't often factor in my decision to get a mouse or not. You yeah. can always change it. Yeah. Um... Anyway, I'm I'm pretty hyped for this. I am I gonna get one? No. Are you gonna get one? If it comes across mouse market at a great price, maybe we'll see. Yeah, same. Like as long as if I could flip it and only be out like five bucks, I would. But even then, you know, if you hold on to it, you're like, crap. This is, you know, I could. This is one hundred fifty dollars. Um. Oh, they yeah, have their not that much, and then kept the mouse. So. Ponage hub introduces web-based platform yeah okay so they're going web-based 37 to 39 grams cool making you continue to question the value prop of the razor viper mini signature edition exactly yeah so if you're looking at this against a viper mini i personally would pick this over a viper mini um all day yeah but i also would probably just pick up like an m Cho's mouse for 50 bucks from aliexpress <laughs> It is nice Honestly, to think. the uh, HKF one's close enough to a Viper Mini. You really want that. Yeah. Good. Um, I actually need to... Uh, I'm, I might be able to get a sample of Ponage's grip tape, so I want to do that. Anyway, I think we've exhausted this topic, so let's move over to another carbon fiber mouse. The WL mouse Ying, set to release the 18th of December. This, This is cool, dude. One day before my birthday. Look at that. Really? Oh. <laughs> wow, you're a, nearly a Christmas baby. That um, that kind of stinks. I love it. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, this was teased a while back. I think I might have talked a little bit more. I think I might have commented. Dude, these colorways. Oh my gosh. Even the scroll, the like custom, you know, instead of just using the normal scroll wheel rubber, they, dude, that I can't blue. I if I love it or it looks like my toddler painted all over it. Oh. Yeah, somebody out there. Not to like, crimp the vibe, but like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I think I like I'm it. Game. That blue, oh, dude. Is it blue and black? Yeah, yeah. I think, oh, dude. I think this is the best looking mouse I've ever seen. Is there a texture to it? It looks like there is. Um, but it maybe. may just be below surface. Not, it doesn't look like it that much in that picture. It looks it's like just the blue and black that gets me. It's like you know how you can get like bowling balls that are like marbled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the shape looks uh, iter played out. It's a, it's a very popular shape nowadays. The Large rear, you know, like a sore, a large rear. Sore yeah, yeah. Yeah, very sharp slope down to the buttons. Um, I commented saying, so the launch price of 9.99 rubles, whatever, is $28 more than what the Beast X launched at. This is MSRP, so like if you buy from AliExpress, there's a markup there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he says China price might be slightly different than global. That's true too with like tariffs and stuff or whatever. Um... I'm pretty I, sure... Huh? No doubt it'll sell. Even at that price, I have no doubt. People will pick this up. Yeah, there was... There were... There were more... Oh, yeah, that's right. There were pictures of it. Yeah, so this is two months ago. Now, that looks that looks rather short, huh? Like, this, this stops quickly. Like, dude, look at how the buttons are, like... Ha more than half the length of the mouse. But those skates look It nice. looks closer to how an X2H Mini feels in the hand, where with my grip, my fingers hang over the front, and that back hump is really filling. Yeah. It said 119 was the dimension for the length. Uh, I think that was I believe. Right. Yeah. yeah. It does look really humpy. You can see they... It looks like they were playing with a magnesium scroll wheel, but then in the Twitter, the more recent Twitter photos, they have that other one. Oh, I like that so much better. You like the metal, yeah. Oh yeah, as I sit here with my X2HES, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is... Oh, yeah, this is probably the same scroll wheel they've had before. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, well, I'm... So, okay. This or the Ponage Trinity? I love this shape more. It has to be this one. Yeah. I think I'm in the same boat. I have height issues with, like, support from the the hump height of the Razor Mini. Yeah. Shape. Even though this mouse, objectively, I like more. Yeah. I'd use the WL mouse more frequently. And these side buttons, huh? This is an older design. This is, like, what Final Mouse used to do. This is what you see more of nowadays. This is cleaner. Okay. Well, that is a very cool product. Um, and then the last, I guess, one would be, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find Final Mouse ULX Competition. Talking about the carbon fiber mice this year. So the the ULX, right, was already their, like, chopped carbon fiber custom polymer or whatever. Now there's the competition. I think this is old news at this point. Their launch day was, what, in September or something? Maybe October. They're starting with the, whatever, the, the like, all black edition they called it founders or something like that where it's like raw carbon with like a clear coat epoxy over it um looks like they actually have a decent amount of literature online what happens if you go to buy yeah okay oh yeah limited raw carbon edition um, there must be enough complaints throughout the community about the holes in the sides because you see solid sides here you see ponage doing that as well yeah i agree <laughs> It's grip tape or no go for me on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm yeah, I mean my WL mouse, both of mine. Yep. Grip tape. Same with my R R2. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Final mouse they they innovate and then they backpedal a little bit. So remember they used to lock their like the tournament one and the scream one were locked to five hundred hertz. Maybe not locked, but maybe default set to 500 hertz because they mm -hmm. said pros feedback was that it feels more raw. Um, and then they went back on that. Now they have, you know, 8K polling. And then the holes in the side, they were the first to revolutionize holes in a mouse, right? And then they've walked back on that. Okay, not not like, you know, oh, it's fun to hate on final mouse, but it just goes to show that's how, right? You innovate on something and then the market sort of learns from that. And then, yeah, sentiments might change. A truly shocking comment to make that 500 hertz is more raw when it's literally not. Yeah, it's I the think. Opposite. Yeah, <laughs> again, this is back. I mean, Final Mouse Scream, what Final Mouse Scream one release date? I want to say 2018, 2016, dude. 2016. Okay. I was that, a child. Yeah, so that's like, that's back when it was tough to find. Um, first of all, good wireless didn't exist. That came out with the G Pro Wireless in twenty eight, like end of twenty eighteen. Yep. And then good sensors were pretty new too, where Logitech had a monopoly or whatever deal with the Pixar thirty three sixty six. You know, there's a part of me that misses RGN reviewing the sensors and making them spit out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's. You know, speaking of RGN, let's 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 go a little bit out of order. Here's just a quick topic. I think I think we're all good with right carbon fiber mice better than like we'll see maybe you end up getting like splinters in your hands <laughs> no <laughs> better than be mag better than magnesium though right yeah 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 okay so i don't have a link here but rocket jump ninja put out a video on 8k hertz pulling rate we're not it's gonna not so much oh not it's line not of tick to... tips speaking so, some common sense here yeah so we're not gonna go through the whole thing but pretty much he does just what um, Optimum Tech did. So 1000 FPS and then measuring, like trying to see motion latency between frames and he was doing this at um, different polling rates and yeah, couldn't tell the difference but then he talks about performance issues on 8K Hertz and he even says he has a pretty modern system. So he does the human benchmark, which, you know, everyone kind of likes to flame him because it's very not scientific. But, you know, his point is basically if you're looking at a 159 millisecond latency to detect something on your screen, but now you're, you know, fussing with polling rates, which are less than one millisecond, how much does it really matter? 
Um, I think it was what a max of four milliseconds you're getting there, and like, if my attention wanes for a second, I can go from one sixty to like one ninety. Like, four milliseconds. What are we talking about? Well, that's yeah. the thing. Not even four though, right? So a thousand hertz is one millisecond. Oh, it's sub. You're right. Yep. Yeah. It's, yep. Yeah. So. I'm with Rocket Jump Ninja. I don't know. I also feel like I don't want to raise my voice too loudly and be like, there's no difference because then players much better than me are going to be like, yeah, there is, you dummy. Like, Boardsy's a big believer in it, right? Yeah, I always play on 4,000 hertz. The comments in this video about performance did make me consider dropping to maybe 2K hertz on Fortnite because I do experience occasional frame drops in that. So, Yeah. Um, yeah we'll see. Yeah, I think, yeah, if I get, like, one frame drop in a life, it's not worth it to me. I'd rather just, yeah. yeah. Um, even in, in, like, 500, when I'm playing Battlefield, even when 500 hertz doesn't feel terrible to me. In aim trainers, I can tell the difference, particularly in um, reactive tracking situations, but it's, like, I have to look for it. If you sat me down in front of, like, not my setup, not my mouse, whatever, and compared 500 hertz versus 1,000 hertz, again, on a 240 hertz display, I think I would not be much better than a 50-50 guess, um, personally. Now, I did have a, four, a 480 hertz OLED briefly, and that, that I could tell a difference on, um... Even he's of the same opinion. His latest monitor says he feels like he got like years younger. Yeah, that that's what it feels like. Um, yeah, playing at 480 hertz, Kovacs, you it doesn't make your aim better. It makes you realize that much more how bad your aim is because you can perceive <laughs> flaws so much more easily. We don't need that. Oh, um, One more side I wanted to throw in there is fun fact that most Xbox controller pulling rates have and still are 125 hertz if you're not aftermarket. So like. Yeah, pros are playing million dollar tournaments on those, and it's yeah. fine. Now that's not to say that that's like where we need to stay. You know, I mean, I use thousand hertz controllers myself, like the Vader Four Pro. But yeah, yeah. Um, and then of in classic Rocket Jump Ninja fashion, he always does something a little bit quirky. And this one, he's uh, looking at lightning as a comparison for what um, a thousand FPS looks like. It's effective though. It is, yeah. He's just, he's a little bit artsy, you know? It's kind of fun. Like, he wrote a book and stuff, and he got into, you know, he produced his own music. Yeah. Anywho. Yeah. ROG, Harp, Ace. Yeah, okay. Well, I think that's all I have for that topic. Uh, What are we at? We're like 22 minutes in. Uh, why don't we hop over to the next topic? Another rapid fire one here. Zowie. U2 owners and get a 4K receiver. Yep, looks like they're targeting November. We'll see if the stock comes out. I've not heard anything about this being purchasable. I have a U2 I've as a slave to the pulling rate. Contradictory to our previous conversation, I'll probably pick that up when it comes out. So. Really? <laughs> okay, what if it's $50? No. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's 20 bucks, and that feels bad. I'd prefer it be 10 or 15 Zowie ain't gonna ain't gonna sell it for twenty bucks. <laughs> no way. Then I'm out. <laughs> no way. Okay. I'll just sell my U2 instead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'll sell my U2 used so I can afford the dongle. If it's that much, man. I don't really have anything else to say on this. Nope. Okay. Here's another quick one. OP1W released November fourteenth. That was well. If this is coming up. Friday this that's today so aim adapt has his video out with the purple edition I think I said damn end game year woke up hard AF steel series next please since a pro and pro mini when yeah so I get right it's a company strategy that you like you want to release your new products you know you know you're quiet you're quiet you're quiet and then you release it when it's like fully cooked and such um but it does you know Back the question, dudes. These companies innovate so quickly. Where is Steel Series? Do they just not care? I mean, they're they resting have... on their laurels of the Apex TKL. And we've got a nice keyboard. Although everyone's releasing Hall Effect keyboards now. Yeah, but and even then, it took forever for them to release that firmware update. I had, I bought Apex Pro TKL when they were like thirty-five bucks from GR Liquidators on eBay 
before they had the firmware update. Then they get the firmware update. And now they're selling for fifty, sixty every day. Isn't that funny? Yeah, mine died. So, rip. <laughs> Go looting. This was teased a while back, though. Sensei Pro Mini. This is back three months ago, brother. Where is it? I'll buy it. The name actually makes sense, unlike the Razer Mini Pro Viper weird leak that wasn't actually real. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. That was around the same time as this. Yep. Everyone was like, oh, my God, the hype. And then the phrasing of it, it just didn't make sense. And here we are. Razer refuses to do that. Razer yeah. Cobra. And Wise Owl is going to be releasing the Cloud S mini or whatever at some point i believe they said i'm on their discord it was supposed to be november now it's pushed back to january that is when i actually might buy full i might pay full price for it. we'll see not you i don't know i'm a wise owl fanboy <laughs> um but yeah uh aim adapt has a video out on with the purple frost so i guess there's going to be a purple frost version and he probably goes in depth with the shape and everything as he normally does. Yep. I need to stay strong with my OP1 8K purple crossed. You I what? don't feel the wire. No? I need to stay strong. Don't sell Damn. the 8K for the 4K. Yeah. I would... I hate wires. It's like a mental mentality thing. I feel it... You just sense that it's there. You don't see it. You might not feel it, but you just sense that it's there. I've yeah. managed to avoid that on the OP1 8K, but... Yeah. Yeah, I 100% know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, oh, I did see that delay due to firmware issues. Oh, this was removed by the moderators? Um, that's oh, that's Twitch. right. So it's not actually launching today. Uh, we have a few that it gets detected as an XM2W when well, Final Mouse seems to have flashed the wrong firmware to their dongle or develop, developed in-house. Yeah, so... Anyway. I, just, I can't imagine uh, a wireless egg mouse being delayed. That's, that's odd. <laughs> yeah, some people are having PTSD in this one. But dude, <laughs> the fact that they gave away XM2Ws is kind of a Chad move. I think we talked about that last time and how much we money did. Yeah, yeah. I love in game gear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Uh, what else we got to talk about? Um, we have. Oh, here's another stupidly small thing. G Wolves has a web based software now for their mice, mouse.xyz. Well, if people care, no comments. Not sure what mice this works for, if any, yet. Just glad to see them moving into the future with everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. I know when I read the Stormbreaker or um, Ponage Hub, I was like, oh, really? I got to download something? But that was web based also. I had the OGB sex and it. Bothered me that that was the only beast sex that doesn't have web based. It just makes it so much easier. Hmm. Uh, here's moving on to our next topic. This one I posted another alphanumeric name Sora shape. So this is the Moto Speed slash Darmo Shark X6 Max. We'll go to the oh. Um, Does so I got Shark not have an X6? They do. They do have Skyrox is about to release the V6, which I believe is an HGS Plus clone. But. Um, I think it's a bit different, but yeah. So, okay. So here's the X6 Max, which is not to be confused with the Attack Shark X6. Even it's another shark company. Uh, even better. There was a guy in the thread who said he had one and he was going to write a review, and the dimensions. And what he said is that it's larger. It's more like an XM2 size rather than a Sora size. So that's kind of cool. Also, it has this like feature here, and it has one on the other side too. Yeah, it has a ridge on the other side. That's kind of mm. unique. It um, is. But yeah, I got into a discussion with some people on the subreddit about Moto Speed and Darmo Shark. So I know that they've been closely affiliated. Um. Motospeed sells some stuff under the Motospeed brand, but they're actually a really huge OEM. I don't know how big they are nowadays, but gosh, I don't want to say like eight years ago or so. They made the Final Mouse Ergo, the original Final Mouse Ergo really? Classic, Yep, which was um, the Razor Imperator also used the same shell. Yep. And then we can look at Razor Imperator. 
which was modified where it had their rubberized coating and, and movable side buttons, but it was, in fact... There you go. Looks like a final mouse. Yep. Yep. But then also the Final Mouse Tournament Pro. This was also produced by... This is a Moto Speed shape. So, I, I, was it the Moto Speed V70? V60? V70? No... Anyway, Moto Speed, all, all their numbers are like Vs and whatever. And this was a Moto Speed V something. Same thing goes with the Imperator slash Final Mouse Ergo. Um, yeah, they had some other people doing it. Uh, th- yeah. Anyway, Moto Speed, I don't know how relevant they are today. Um, their website doesn't really show much of anything. It's motospeed.cn. But maybe it's like a very close, um, you know industry they don't want to share too much info i don't know anyway darmo shark i think is literally just their brand that they sell and uh this one's actually branded moto speed which is interesting yeah darmo shark has yet to impress me on quality for any of their mice that i've had yeah it just felt cheap so i'm interested to see if this is the same agreed they're 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 not bad i mean they're not bad like they're not they're like four... I have a bad copy of one, but yeah. generally the you're right. They're not terrible. Yeah, for me they're like four out of ten. Like you know, you know it's not the best quality, but you're also not paying you know more than fifty dollars for it. It's the mouse I gave my friend when he needed one. Yeah. yeah. So the thirty three ninety five version is ten bucks cheaper. No Omron Opticals. This, I actually would be buying during the sale to try it out if it had Omron Opticals, but it uses TTC um, greens or whatever, which I think are... They're not Are they optical. also more more of a hollow sound, like the TTC Golds, perhaps? Probably. Um, and I yeah. think that's partially from... They, they use this dust-proof nipple here to right. uh, IP54 ingress rating. Yeah, 500 milliamp hour battery. Oh, I love this chip brain <laughs> yeah 46 grams for the 500 milliamp hour 43 grams for the other plus or minus bull crap just add two yep. um oh and then this one gets the skin type fine coating i do really like on um, the darmo shark n5 this coating is better than i would say it's like a pulsar coating it's not, not the raw plastic of yeah. not have here yeah yeah yeah, in fact, I I don't think my camera will pick it up, but the the bottom is a slightly different color. You can see the bottom's more pinkish. Yeah, this is more orange. Uh, I think that's all I have on this one. You got anything else? No, I did notice. I guess that the length is 122 millimeters, so it's a bit bigger than other Sora-esque shapes. So. Yeah, and that's what the guy on. Yeah, I, I hope Which he posts it? his. Interesting move for an already back hump mouse. Could size it up for some people with smaller hands. Yeah, I'm worried that it might feel too wide. It might be mm-hmm. kind of like you're holding a brick. <laughs> That's against the RJN philosophy of having a narrow mouse, you know. Right. Which I, I I like this too, but Okay, let's jump over to the next thing. Vaxi X Ninjutsu Sora. So this was like leaked photos from a it looks like an FCC report or some something. So we have a Sora logo, and it clearly looks like a Sora. And then my dog's breathing on the door. But we have a Vaxi branding here, Vaxi type skate design also. What an odd thing for two separate mouse manufacturers to come together as opposed to like an esports team or something. Yeah, well, let, let's talk about that. Okay, so obviously they have the colors here. That's how Vaxi names their colors. Mm-hmm. And I know I asked, does anyone know the extent of the collab besides colorways? I said maybe powered by Vaxi means like basically their board, their 3950 and firmware. Because the Sora, the Sora V2 is 3395 still. So maybe Ninjutsu didn't want to um, develop. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's Vaxi yeah, who has the... Th- yeah. So maybe they didn't want to develop that. Um, they want to just basically buy someone's board. Or what I really think is going on is um, everyone in there, as we saw with 
the MCHOS L7, this new Moto Speed mouse, everyone and their dog are making Sora shapes. Vaxi doesn't have one. And Vaxi takes their sweet time making a shape. Because they're, they're, remember, they're like Zowie, right? So I think they're like basically licensing a shape. They partnered with Ninjutsu to get, you know, a 38, 39 gram Sora shape, basically. I was going to say, yeah, with, with Vaxi and their propensity to have a heavier mouse, maybe this is just an easier entry as well into the lightweight space. Yeah. So what did... Maybe Vaxi acquired Ninjutsu. Uh, this was the most upvoted comment. I'm surprised people uh, pe- people on Reddit. I'd like to, you know, stir the pot. I mean, the uh, 8K dog on Ninjutsu fiasco probably didn't stir confidence in them. So Yeah, true. But this has probably been going on for a long time. Again, to, to get to this point where you have, like, wireless testing photos, this has probably been in development for, like, at least a year. So out of nowhere, LMAO... Um, yeah, so what was interesting to this is you sent me the link to, uh-huh. yeah, let's go to sort by new official response. Hello everyone. Since yesterday morning, some Vaxi Sora certification pictures began to circulate on the internet, causing some unnecessary speculation, such as Ninjutsu acquisition. This guy's from Ninjutsu, so he puts it in all caps every time. In order to avoid the spread of misinformation, we would like to clarify some content here. Thank you for your concern with our brand, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is co- cooperation between Ninjutsu and Vaxi. We're still confirming the details. Can't announce anything at this time. Thank you for your attention. If the partnership goes well, we expect to announce product details at the end of November. Thank you for your concern and support to Ninjutsu! <laughs> Exclamation point. Committed to developing better. Okay, blah, blah, blah. What's what's your take on? I I have a take on this. My take is the same as the top comment. <laughs> the Jets are the strangest <laughs> mouse company. <laughs> That's how I feel. Yeah. Okay, why is that? I just the whole AK dongle thing threw me. They've got they've had this one shape. They haven't come back with their old shape. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what their direction is. I agree, but I think for different sentiment. Um. I think that they're weird. It's nobody. A- nobody asked for this public statement. See, I I remember that that other thread. This thread got ninety two upvotes. Okay, that's not nothing, but it's also not big news. That's that's ninety two people, dude. Ninety two people. It's a, it's a Reddit post on Mouse Review. Unless this was going on somewhere else, yeah. Oh, I actually, to squash the rumors. I was actually trying to buy an Infinity Mouse uh, Infinite Speed from this guy. Anyway. Yeah, I've seen him over mouse market. Anyway. Yeah, so... I don't know why this... Anyway. I just thought it's, like, way heavy, way too heavy-fisted to make a statement about this. <laughs> <laughs> like, who cares? <laughs> sure, it's good. It's good public... You know what they should have done if they were smarter about publicity? They would have, like, leaked more photos, like, a week from now to stay relevant in the news cycle, you know? They're just trying to counter the... I keep talking about the AK dongle. They were so silent on it. They've just... They're transparent now. They want the people to know. Yeah. Well, that's valid. Okay. I don't think I have anything else on this. How about you? No. Let's move on. Okay. Boardsy has a product idea. So, if you guys haven't seen this, check it out. It's three minutes, but the gist is... OLED screen... Tempered glass mouse pad. Like the final mouse centerpiece. It's not been done that I'm aware of. It's yeah. an innovative idea. I can go many directions. It is. I mean, dude, the prices that people pay for their Japanese weeb anime girl mouse pads, dude. Yeah, Nuts. Give, me like my, give me FPS. Give me something relevant on this. I don't know. Put the... Let's integrate with Fortnite and give me a mini map on my mouse pad. I don't know. Now that's cool. Right. You, yeah. Just set it up as like another display. Um, yeah. That's cool. So, right. You could go two ways with this display. Okay. You could go. Boardsy was like, oh, it doesn't even have to be, you know, 240 hertz. It could be like 120 hertz. Dude. 120 hertz mouse pad. Nobody's going to. How much is 120 hertz monitor? Okay. Now add a glass mouse pad. I don't I don't think. 
Give me 30 hertz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I think I think you could go two ways with this. You could go Uber Gamer. It's another display. Again, for like a mini map or that that's that's wildly cool. Mini map. Um make it like a 3DS bottom screen, maybe. Yeah, I mean I mean what what could what could you Okay, wait. Before we get to that, what the other avenue is e-ink. Okay? It's more yeah. about like super low power consumption and the artwork. Because like e-ink, it only consumes power when the pixels shift. So you could have a static image that's there permanently. I believe there's like some fade over time because the ink is like um, liquid, right? So like there's like e-ink displays often have a refresh button on it. But yeah, e-ink, dude. Yeah, you're stuck to monochrome, but you're never having to plug in your mouse pad because you just put a little solar panel on it like your calculator. So I think this goes the direction of it becoming an input even. Input into your computer through a mouse pad, like a touchpad almost. Yeah, well, yeah, I think like... Draw on my mouse pad. Sure. Well, can't you actually do that, right? Um, Well, like touchscreens, capacitive touchscreens that have glass over them, right? They just touch through the glass. So Mm -hmm. you could theoretically do the same thing. Now talk about like palm rejection, (laughs) but um, yeah, you could have like a, like a Mac laptop bar at the top with the touch buttons yeah now would you want this integrated into your mouse pad though because you could just get a steam deck i do love the steam deck or, i'm sorry oh, no. steam steam stream deck <laughs> stream deck you know the uh the buttons and you can customize the. you know what i'm talking about i do yeah yeah okay i have a very knockoff version of that yeah, yeah okay elgato yeah these things so I don't know. You could go. You could go two ways, right? You could or have both products, right? So your premium product is your OLED or something that's really nice that you can use as you know. You got to plug it in with an HDMI cable or whatever. Display port, USB C. Um, that's right. You could do USB C these days. And then you could have a more budget option that is like e ink or maybe even like you know how WL Mouse just has their stupid little animation that plays over and over again. Yep. Man, if there's ever a product where people are going to question if it's a gimmick, it would be this, though. <laughs> well, there's the Razer Firefly? Yeah. Yeah, like, RGB mouse pads were made fun of a long time ago, and now... Whoops, let's go to Amazon. If it actually loads. Um, I have an RGB mouse pad, and the ambient lighting that it did was actually kind of nice. Yeah, I don't hate it. I've never used one myself, but I imagine they're like a pretty popular. Yeah, dude. Basic peripheral. Look at the number of reviews on these. Six yeah, thousand. Fifteen thousand on the one below that. Fifteen thousand. Dude. They're selling for thirteen bucks. The manufacturing cost must be dirt cheap. Yeah. So how these are made, it's um pretty cool actually. So. Mm, So this controller box here on the left, this has an LED inside of it. And then this is just light piping. This is just a tube of like plastic. And then when they stitch it, they just stitch. It doesn't show up here. But like, you know how you're stitching on the edge of your mouse pad kind of does, you know, coils. They just coil it around that. But they use a thread that's... um, clear plastic. So it's kind of stretchy. Like you could you could you could you could rip it. But very cheap. And they work. Um they're not this vibrant because it's a light pipe so it has that kind of translucent look. It's not for sure. You can tell it's going through a tube. It's not actually illuminating at your eyes. It's about the vibes. It's about the vibes. But it does give a decent little bit of ambient lighting if you're in, if you're in a dark room. And I did the calculation too, um, <laughs> for power consumption because mine was on an always-on USB port, and I calculated uh, having it on twenty-four-seven, three sixty-five for a year was negligible. I want to say it was, it was, it was not dollars; it was cents. Um, Love that because the thing is only like you know like two watts or whatever, because it's like you know a single LED. So. Would you buy? Would you buy an OLED mouse pad? Okay, first of all, would you buy a mouse pad with a glass mouse pad with a screen behind it over 
let's say it's a let's say it's a hundred bucks over a it's two hundred dollars. It's gotta give me some kind of performance benefit. I've not even tried a glass pad myself and like I might not be the standard consumer, but I just want to perform well with it. Then again, you can toss your cloth pad right on this presumably large glass pad if you're trying to really go for it. And it just depends what the features are, I guess. If yeah. it somehow gives me an advantage in a game, maybe. Okay. What about an e-ink type that is... Let's make it uh, 150. No. No. Oh, lead. OLED's just like the buzzword it gets you. It makes yeah. it fires you up more. There's more value there. Yeah, I'm I'm in the same camp as you. I I would only get an e ink if it was like the same price. Yep. And I don't think I'd ever get OLED unless it was again, I'm not a fan of glass pads like you. I don't want to have to put on a sleeve every single time I sit down to game. But it sounds like they're getting better in that regard, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, so that was Boardsy's video. It's pretty... We talked about it more than his video length actually is, so... <laughs> Anywho. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. So that pretty much does it for, like, our news for the week. Like, the things that happened this week in particular. Um, do you actually want to do the Tom's Guide now since that happened this week? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Okay. So... Here's something a little bit inflammatory, maybe. Tom's Guide releases he uh this gentleman, no nope, woman, Eve. Eve, but I'm a gamer and the <laughs> children. <laughs> it's not even Okay, sorry. Um, Eve Eve says, I'm a gamer, and these are five Black Friday gaming mouse deals I recommend. That's the most chat gpt summary. Mice I couldn't live without. Okay. So, what does Tom's guy, what does Eve... Okay, wait a second. Okay. Okay, we'll get through. We'll get through Eve's list. We'll judge a little bit. And then we'll click on her profile here, and then we'll judge a little bit more, Okay. So, first one on the list. Oh, this is the list here. Oh, this is the five. Oh, okay. Um, I I'm just I just skimmed this the first time. Logitech GPX Superlight Two. I don't know if this is this in order. No. There Log- isn't really like a ranking there. No. Logitech but, yeah. GPX Two. Cherry M sixty eight. Okay. So far so good. Death Adder V three. The wired one, specifically the wired one, okay. Red Dragon M916 Pro, okay. Smash it. And Steel Series Aerox 5, okay. That's... I have many thoughts. You have many thoughts. Let's hear them. GPX2, I love that. That price seems solid if you're buying it. Once you're the kind of person who needs one mouse, it's going to last you forever. It's going to perform great. But the question is, do you need that much of a mouse if you're that person? One. So it's on. Okay. So let's back up. This is being published because Black Friday deals are coming. And so the premise is we're getting a deal here. Keep that in mind as we look at the prices and the sales. Right. And the premise for Eve is that she's getting affiliate code revenue. Sure. <laughs> So, GPX Super Light 2 for $123, $123 on Amazon. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree. I think it's fine. Um It's like 100 bucks average used on mouse market, so 123 new. It's a good price. Yeah. Amazon return policy. Per, yeah, so personally, um I would just get a GPX 1 because the only difference the, the sensors are negligibly different. Uh I guess you're really just getting the optical switches with the super light too. So that does you can go up to 8K hertz. Okay, I I have an but, opinion on 8K, but yeah, um, the the GPX two. So you so you get like the biggest benefit. Okay, other than 8K, the biggest benefit is optical switches. So you don't have double clicking theoretically. Okay, 
personally, I would just opt for an older one, but I guess I'm stupid. Yeah, if if I'm if yeah. if my friend comes to me with a boatload of money and is like, "Whoa, most do I get phalanges?" I'll say, "Yeah, sure, GPX two, have at it." Ninety percent of people should get a GPX one. I would agree. Yeah. Okay. Not a mouse I have experience with. Also, only a seven dollar discount. Okay, Cherry M sixty eight. So was ninety nine dollars U S. Now ninety two dollars on Amazon. So, I have, I have thoughts on this. Yep. So it had that ad tracking thing. Yep. Ninety two fifty two. This mouse is, for me, was nothing special. I got a review unit and I pretty promptly s dismissed it. Um. It has the low it has the low button height. It has side buttons that protrude out nice and far. The scroll wheel is nice. The scroll wheel on this was quite nice. Middle mouse click was pretty quiet. The scrolling was notchy, but still pretty quiet. The rubber on this, on all of these new, because I got another review unit of the M sixty eight. No, sorry, sixty four, the Ergo. Really nice rubber on the scroll wheels. The coating feels like a pulsar coating. Absolute fingerprint magnet. Worse than anything else I've ever used. I usually don't care about fingerprints. It was when when I was boxing up the mouse, I was trying to take a microfiber and get the fingerprints off and I couldn't. But um, it, do, it does feel good. Not Viper V3 good, but like Pulsar good. Yeah. The state... H2H Black Batch 1 coding yep. is exactly how you describe it. Sorry about that volume. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too loud for the stream. So, are they going to show us the skates? This is also on one of their pads that I also have a review unit of. The skates on it were nice, and it uses the side charging. Uh, they're not going to show us. They're side charging because there's no USB at the front. For me, the shape was meh. It was pretty flat sides, and they were... My biggest issue, they were kind of curved weirdly. So, as, as the sides got towards the front... They were a V shape, and then as you move towards the back of the mouse, it became more of like a, a pyramid shape. So, a lot, most mice do this, okay? Like even the Viper V3 Pro. I mean, you eventually get to the back where that hip is, and it does, it does invert. This inverted like way too far forward, so you end up gripping at a part that's like where the wall is kind of doing a transition between the two, and it, it didn't feel great. I have the same issue with um, the Deluxe M600. This does just look like an awkward shape, even at first glance. It's just something that looks off about it. Yeah, like, if you look at the right side here, it looks like there would be a nice ring finger ledge, but there ain't. So anyway, this shape didn't hit for me. I like the M64 more, but uh, I forget somebody's video. Boardsy? He agreed with you, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Or was he reversed? I can't remember. Somebody was reversed, and they liked the M68 more. So, whatever. Okay. Sorry. Moving on. Tom's list. Back to it. Death Adder V3 Wired. What are your thoughts? It's a great mouse at $70 even, but I've seen it much cheaper than this on Amazon. So, they're so the deal itself isn't that great. I also got one myself for 20 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. So. 20 bucks for a Wired Death Adder V3. There are better deals to be had. Yeah. So this one on Amazon, their advertising is fifty nine, ten dollars off of the normal price of sixty nine. It's not a bad suggestion though. It's a great mouse. The coating is the smooth touch that they've moved on and use with all the V three Pros now. Yeah, I mean, as well, it's a big ergo. Which if you're a casual user, I mean, you probably don't mind it because you're not looking for the perfect grip. But it is a larger mouse. Some of my normie friends just have it cemented in their mind that a gaming mouse is wired. You know, us, we millennials who grew up where wired mice were the norm and like wireless was bad, even if you did look into that, you know, laser yep. sensors and motion delay and stuff. And the cables are really good. The newest, the newer cables on these Razer Death Adders are great. Um, I believe, does the wired one have the smooth touch or is that a different version? The wired one was the first one to have it. And the smooth touch is good. Very good. Very, very good. Yeah. Yeah. And the Death Adder name, I want to say, just has staying power amongst, like, casual plus, casual-ish gamers. Yeah. Like, I've known about the Death Adder for so long. And the V2 was just, like, 
you go to Walmart, Death Hunter V2, Death Hunter Essential, it's it's everywhere. You see it, you know the name, it's, you kind of trust it. It's the longest running mouse name in, in existence, right? It's yeah. got to be. So, yeah, it's a good mouse. Personally, for 59 bucks, I would just get a used wireless one from eBay, but I'm also not a normal person. I have a desk behind me that has soldering and disassembly tools and switch swapping and Sure. Red Dragon. M916 Pro for $44 on Amazon. I know nothing about this mouse. Oh, I know for that a lot. Red Dragon is not something I've used before or heard good things about. <laughs> okay. So I have a lot of thoughts on this because I have two. Um, so first of all, the, the, the short version is this is amazing value. Tech Power Up did a review. Red Dragon and uh, King Pro. And so the downsides are significant CPI deviation. Not a big deal because you just have to adjust it in the software. Lackluster mouse feet. Very true. They're thin. They're black. They suck. Charging cable could be more flexible. Strong disagree with him on this one. Red Dragon cables are like the best cable. <laughs> they are, dude. They are like actually the softest, plushiest, most flexible mouse cables out there that I have tried. I have like Red Dragon seats to Vine, so I have like six of their mice, dude. Dude. I will anyway, say a person reading this article and buying this mouse probably doesn't know how to adjust the CPI and see well DPI like deviation. That's a good point. Uh, so CPI and they're not replacing mouse feed either. So that's true. Okay, as an enthusiast, um, those, those things don't bother me. You yeah, get I agree. you get true 4K hertz. You get good sensor performance, low click latency. Um, it has good internals. The thing is stupidly lightweight. I did a destructive mod to mine. Man, phalanges, red dragon G49, weight reduction, and I got it down to. Here we go. So 51 grams is the stock weight of this white one. Yeah, so with a really crappy destructive base mod, 41 grams, dude. It's a medium-sized mouse. The shape is rather unique. It has, it's like a pear shape. So the sides at the front are like really flat. And then it has this bulbous butt that kind of comes to a bit of a point right in the middle. And the buttons are kind of flat. So the weakest thing for me on it is actually the shape. It's a safe-ish shape. It's just weird. It's doesn't seem like it was as Roger, Rocket Jump Ninja would say. It was designed in a computer, not by but not by clay. You know. Or, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, it was twenty four dollars on AliExpress. Wow. Dude, they've been on Amazon. They've been that too shipped from Amazon. Return policy. And then this is the 4K version. I would have almost recommended the 1K version in this article. What's the pricing yeah. look like on that? I think it was mentioned in the blurb below it, but... Oh. Um, he says... So... As, uh, no, Tom's, Tom's Guide, right? Oh, Tom's Guide. $44. You might even spot... It was 20 for the 1K. Yeah. Yeah, that's nuts. With a 33.95, dude... The, the like shelf per tray price of a thirty three ninety five. If you go on AliExpress, try to buy just the sensor. They're like five, six dollars. <laughs> I've been persuaded this is a good recommendation here. Yeah. Um the the yeah, so other than the shape being kinda of wonky, the build quality is not great. So what I like about the build quality is um there's no coating, it's just smooth plastic like a GPX. The side buttons are shockingly good. The side buttons are pretty big. They protrude quite a bit. The front one has a uh, dimpling on it that so you can actually feel the difference. Nice snappy, a yeah. little bit of a hollow sound, that's fine. The Huano transparent blue shell pink dot implementation is fine. Maybe a little bit on the spongy side. Uh, and that's about it for the good. The bad is scroll wheel Way too smooth, not noticeable steps, kind of noisy. The rubber on the scroll wheel feels kind of plasticky. It feels really cheap. It's like a rubber plastic blend. Um, middle mouse feels cheap. 
uh, and then the mouse, the whole mouse itself, it's like rather hollow feeling. It feels like a, I don't want to say a twenty dollar. It feels like a forty dollar mouse. It feels like a Darmo shark. It looks like one too. Yeah. <laughs> Their newer ones, the M918 is better, which is basically a larger version with slightly better contouring, and the M815, which is really similar to the M918. Stupid naming, way oversaturated. Anyway, point is, um, I don't know why this person included this. This is such an off-the-wall recommendation. Think of all the other offering, the budget offerings from, you know... M chose Attack Shark. Um, just looking over here, Deluxe. Uh, uh, I mean, Filena, Darmo Shark. If you if you Google gaming mouse on Amazon, you're going to get Red Dragon recommendations. So that may have played into it. That's true. Yeah, that's right. Because this person has you. Could, this is um, their yeah affiliate code link tracker cookie whatever. I got my 4K one from um, Amazon and the ETV, I think, was like $28. Last one, SteelSeries Aerox 5. Okay, what's the weight on this thing? It already feels overpriced to me. SteelSeries we already talked about being kind of out of the loop, right? Aerox 5 is 74 grams. It's pushing it. I mean, it's... Faxi XE S. That's not as bad as I thought. It's a very large 129s up there as far as length for a mouse, tall, wide, all of it. Um, well, what's a competition? Okay, you're 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 a normie. You buy based on what's available on the shelf in Best Buy, has RGB and looks cool. This is there. You know the Steel Series name. So, what's the lightest weight G502 wireless that the plus? Can't be. Um, it's the X. G502 sure. X. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Okay, so it's lighter than a G502 X. And, and notably shorter. And what's Basilisk would be another... Is the 35K the most recent? V3 Pro, I think, is the most recent. V3 Pro. 112 grams. So, yeah, that's the thing. Steel Series, I think they're the only ones with like a G502 ish mouse that's decently light, and the Aerox 9 wireless. I've had this. I was in search of an MMO mouse and I went down the Aerox 9 rabbit hole. Yeah, you can't it find. It is monstrous. Mm-hmm. This thing is huge. I could not grip it in a way where I could reach the front three buttons comfortably. You're not supposed to grip it. You're supposed to take your palm. You smack it on the mouse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But and I believe like wow, well, this doesn't work for me. Yeah. Razor Nog X all day. Yeah. 89 grams though. That's like way better than. I mean, of course your scimitar is probably. 89 better. grams is a feather in the MMO gaming mouse. Spectre. Scimitar is 108. Not as bad as I thought. But... Check the Razor Naga as well. That's the other. Go Naga Pro. Naga Pro. 134. Yeah. Now, the, the Naga, if you talk wired, the Naga X is 85 grams. I have I have a couple. And yeah, I have one too. Yeah. yeah. But again, these people aren't looking for, like, lightweight isn't, you know, it's, it's on the list of wants, but it's not the top, right? Your top are things like palm grip ability, number of side buttons for key binds. I've rated a very high level, run high level M plus Dungeons and WoW with a very brickish Naga, and yeah. it was no problem. Yeah. Um, But still, recommending this in 2024, first of all, it's a shame that like no one else has really innovated here. Oh, uh, Keychron M6? And Keychron M7, right? M7 is going to be closer. There you go. There's your there's your trigger, your thumb trigger. Or yeah, not enough for clutch. MMOs. No. The Logitech G600 is the old school darling of this, the MMO yeah. crowd. 
but they're impossible to come by. Well, still, I would probably recommend these keychrons. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of. Kind of spongy clicks, texturing's way too coarse, but. Um, 125, dude. I I couldn't I couldn't tell a friend get an Air Rex Five for 125. No, eBay used Naga. That's the way to go. Yeah. Yeah, I want to be mad about this recommendation, but I can't because there's a there's it's a harmless a, list. Yeah, gap in the market. Okay. I'm still shocked that this a mouse of this size. <laughs> like I don't have small hands, so they're medium, and this thing felt like I was gripping a house. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, what would be your what would be your list of five recommendations? GPX OP1 9 8K. That thing is like sixty dollars, I think. The wired, is great. The wired OP1, but you don't need the AK. Yeah. Okay. Do we want an enthusiast option here? Yeah, sure. I mean, they have. If you have a good sale on the Viper V3 Pro, then go for it. It's like yep. the top recommendation flagship. Agreed. If we're talking MMO mouse, Razer Naga Hyperspeed V2, I think is the one that I have. It's like a Naga, but it also has two buttons at the front left of M1 that you can also. Yep, this is it. Yeah. You can assign actions in an MMO to those front two buttons as well, which is sick. So yeah. that's what I do. Okay. Yeah, my Ooh, list. Friends. Wait, is that five? That was four. I Death Hatter wired. Death Hatter wired. Death Hatter yeah. wired. Let's yeah. put an Argo on there. Yeah, soft. I was gonna say. Yeah, I think my list would be similar. I would say, um, well, for the price of one twenty three, a uh, Viper V three Pro versus GPX two, I would take Viper V three every day. Um, and remember Coding. with this too, you get aftermarket skates, you know, support and. You know, if you have problems with it, there's going to be people who have had the same problems posting online. So that would be like my just overall easy pick. I would say Viper V3 Pro. Um, for my Ergo recommendation, I would go... I guess Attack Shark. Was it X6, X11? No. Um, they. I don't know if Attack Shark... Oh! Oh, here's a weird R11? one. R, they have the R1. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go for my budget. For my budget one, I'll go Attack Shark R1. We got um, <laughs> I would also go uh, Wise Owl Cloud. I think that's an amazing mouse. And something with Omron Opticals. Um, Maya X. It's on yeah, the more expensive side, but yeah, it's I, just so good. It's not. I mean, one twenty actually is reasonable compared yeah. to the price yeah. tag of the Viper V three Pro at retail. I would okay. So I have Viper V three Pro. I have Budget Attack Shark R one. I have Wise Owl Cloud, Lamzu Maya X, and I'll also say Lamzu Thorn. Yeah, you've I'm, got price range all over the place. You got a budget option. You've got or mainstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good one. I think, well, the thing is, I don't want to, like, I could just list more mainstream. I could have more Razor on there, but um, I think Lamzu, dude, Lamzu could be mainstream. Lamzu could be, you have holes on the bottom, but the build quality is so good. The fit and finish is so good, so consistent. The best clicks I've ever used are on the Maya, the Maya X. You have different colorways. You have a great unboxing experience. Um, they come up with original shapes. Yeah, original shapes. They're used in competitive settings. Um, yeah, I yeah, Lamzu Lamzu needs more recognition, I think. But uh, anyway, that'd be my list. Okay. Um, I think so. That does it for the news this week. Okay, quick aside here. Do you want to get into... We're, we're going at an hour nine here. We still have a lot more to cover. Um, do you... How do you want to do this? Do you want to... Do you want over... to cover AliExpress deals while I dip okay. for a bit? And then I'll come back and talk about skill-based matchmaking and such. Okay. You think, you think you will be back? Yeah, I'll be back. Okay. 
Cool. All right. So we're going to move on to some AliExpress deals that we... Oh, I kind of want to talk. Okay. So Daz did get some AliExpress deals, and I did too. So I actually kind of want to see if he comes back, if we can go over some of those. I have some other things to go over. I guess we're going to be a bit longer this week. Let, let us know in the comments below um, if longer is bad or not. I don't know what retention is going to be at this point. Ten minutes uh, over an hour. Let's just keep going. So... <laughs> I do want to go over, let's go over some things that happened on Reddit. Introducing my custom grip on Razer Viper Mini. Just wanted to show you guys my homemade grip on Viper Mini. This is made by myself. It's kind of felt fabric. No sweating, no grease, using it for four years. I know I might look a little dirty after these years, but it was literally worth it. <laughs> This this comment made me laugh out loud. Yeah, so what the F is that, brother? <laughs> that just sums it up so well. This thing got 88 upvotes, and I'm so glad it did. I commented on this. <laughs> this dude said I thought it was cake. <laughs> I said, felt? Holy moly, I love this sub. I thought I was weird liking glossy mice. You do you, king. Big balls to post this. <laughs> I knew he was going to get roasted. And four years is impressive. By the way, have you ever changed the felt out? Why felt? Have you tried other fabrics? And I think he replied. He said, OP says, I didn't change, he didn't change the felt. I've had many fabrics, but I like this one much more in touch and feeling. Also, it's tough enough to age and more grippy than others. Dude, white felt looking this like this after four years this dude, homie, has clean hands. Go put white grip tape on your mouse and use it for a month and let me know what that grip tape looks like, dude. I have I bought some white grip tape from AliExpress. I put some on a mouse at work. At work, I, I'm an R&D um, engineer and I work in the lab sometimes when my hands get dirty. Dude, my white wall how is is not white. My white grip tape is not white. <laughs> Even my red grip tape that came on my Wise Owl Cloud. Yeah. Homie did an RGB cutout. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, man. <laughs> this guy says, waited four years to post it and society isn't ready for this yet. <laughs> what a shame. What a shame, <laughs> society. <laughs> oh, dude. This, this. Yeah, so what the F is that, brother? <laughs> Oh, I love that post. That made me laugh so hard. Okay, moving on to the next Reddit thing. Um, uh, no. Let's go over. Oh, are you I'm back? I am back. Oh, okay. Okay. The I just... only comment on that was that it looks like the abominable snowman from Monsters Inc. got thrown onto a mouse. Hold up. Is there like a woolly mammoth on my mouse? Like, what's happening here? From what movie? Monsters Inc. Oh, yeah, we're there in the little... Dude, he does look fuzzy. He does look like felt. Right? He's a snowman, but he looks like felt. Yeah, this is homie's mouse right there. <laughs> Dude, look at his lip. <laughs> uh. Okay, so let's go back to um, a topic then. Let's go back to skill-based versus skill-based matchmaking versus... Engagement optimized matchmaking. Thank you. A case study by UCLA with the assistance of electronic arts. I'm already suspicious. So as an introduction, yeah. ever ever hear of EOMM, engagement optimized matchmaking, which is different than skill-based matchmaking. Um, it looks like the paper can be found here. Um, their abstract is... Matchmaking connects multiple players, blah, blah, blah. In this paper, we propose that EOMM, Engagement Optimized MM, maximizes overall player engagement. We prove that equal skill-based matchmaking is a special case of EOMM on a highly simplified assumption that rarely holds. Our simulation on real data from a popular EA video game supports our theoretical results showing a significant improvement in enhancing player engagement compared to existing matchmaking methods. And we have 
some people from UCLA, and some people from EA. Okay. So, Daz, can you sum up? Start start yeah. with your thoughts and, and sum this up for us. They are you, and they're, I mean, they're right. Skill-based matchmaking is like a subset of engagement optimized matchmaking. Skill is one factor that goes into like how they're determining how to keep you the most engaged. And they talked about um, other factors like spending for microtransactions, just retaining the players over like the course of a playing session, over the course of time, over the course of the game of a life or the life of a game. And then skill is another. There were a couple other factors there. None of these are like constant. They're all like parts of the algorithm, and like you can tune them. You can pull the lever back or push it forward to like skew it more towards a certain aspect of those to maximize up they're like keeping the player in your game and playing or spending more money and i would imagine that this has become much 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 more sophisticated this paper came out in 2015 i believe we're nine years later into this and i having played fps recently specifically call of duty specifically black Ops 6 can guarantee that this is very 2017 okay very very hard tuned um it kind of goes hand in hand with another paper we had an activision white paper that came out with skill-based matchmaking but i don't like i agree that engagement optimized is probably a better idea than skill-based because the way skill-based is calculated they talk about here at a base level is a 1v1 situation they propose in this paper that your skill-based matchmaking can be expanded to something like 6v6 by just summing everyone's skills which i hard disagree with because if you have five terrible players and one god, the other team, if they're all average players and your total skill is the same, is going to have a bad time because that god is going to theoretically destroy the other team. Unless there's a strong element of map control there, but yeah. we're or talking about public matches, so like the coordination on that six-man te team is probably pretty low. Especially um, in competitive modes like a search and destroy. Exactly. Everyone likes to go and do their own thing in that situation. Or games that have um, heavy snowball mechanics where, you know, uh, Call of Duty kill streaks, for example, you're literally get like instant kill items as a reward for having a high KD. So yeah, I'll talk about that as well. <laughs> I used to play Call of Duty like Black Ops Two in a way where I would run like a UAV, uh, like another radar streak, and then like docks or swarm. And like if I didn't get that in a game, it was a bad game. Playing Call of Duty Black Ops 6, I'm lucky to get like a couple UAVs a game, which is like a four or five kill streak. Because it seems like the skill tuning of Call of Duty's engagement optimized matchmaking is tuned to like Oblivion. Hmm. Specifically for the top 10% of players, if you look at the Activision white paper, they they break their matchmaking into 10 segments and the, the top 10% just get put in very sweaty lobbies, for lack of a better term, all the time. Do you want me to um, jump over to this one? This one I haven't looked at as in okay. depth just because it's a much larger paper, but I got like a summary okay. from a different YouTube video. So wait, can you are you able to to speak to their like testing methodology and how they're able to support their claim? So you said okay, first of all, to break it down, engagement based matchmaking, if I'm understanding this right. Engagement means things like retention. Yeah, how, how do how do you measure engagement, right? So this is retention. This is uh, spending money on microtransactions, right? This is like um, time in game, like uh, right. Well, I, I, I guess that's pretty much it. Time in game and microtransactions, right? Because those are the two things that they want. And it might mean slightly different things to every other to different companies. If you're a smaller company, you might not even implement this. You might lean more out of microtransactions if you're not as greedy. Mm -hmm. We're assuming. A lot of people just want, or the top companies just want you to play the absolute most because then you like the game the most, you spend the most money. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And their test methodology is, so, you, you sorry, you were mentioning the 1v1 being um, typically... That was their base test case here, yeah. Okay. Another fascinating aspect is they actually talked about time complexity of algorithm being applied to matchmaking as, like, an aspect of which one they would choose. So, like, they choose to keep... And there was in a talk of how these algorithms evolved over time. But basically, keeping something like an ELO rating 
that just adjusts on the fly every single game. There's an instant reaction that like changes your underlying elo that makes the calculation of the skill based matchmaking much more quick. I found gotcha. that pretty fascinating. Yeah. Okay. One more fun fact here. Um, this was 2000. There's a number from 2015 where they estimated the esports uh, field to be worth over $750 million. So that's definitely eclipsed a billion, if not a multi billion dollar industry in the esports alone, which is kind of shocking to me. It wait, still wait, seems on, on what time niche. scale? Sorry, they, they estimated what? If you go to the top of the first page on the right hand side, it talks about esports is estimated to have 180 million viewership and $750 million worth of market. And that was in 2015. So we can only assume that the uh, the estimated market of esports has exploded since then to a, a multi billion yeah. dollar industry. But but this is okay. This isn't a projection into 2015. This is what it was in 2015, correct? Yeah, it's their estimate from 2015. Okay. So do you want to? Uh, sorry, was there anything else you wanted to go over with this paper? Not particularly, though. No. Okay. I guess I didn't really look through it. Um, do you want to go over to the this one? I, I haven't looked at this one either. I haven't dug into this as much. Um, I will say they claim here, as you see right there, that connection and time to match are the number one and number two factors in matching with players. I don't, I don't know if I believe that, or maybe there's just such a, such a big player base that has a reasonable ping nearby that they can really still hit that skill base and that engagement right on the head with how highly tuned it seems in these most recent games. Mm -hmm. But I would love to believe that that's the case as far as ping and time to get into a match, which for what it's worth is very quick on this latest COD compared to the recent ones before it. Hmm. So, And this is a, this is a more recent yeah, April, 2024. So yeah, you, this came out this year. Yeah. You can tell this one's a bit more dated and it's dated. Not um, it's more basic. It's just it's a bit more exploratory, like early yeah. phase. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah, like 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 yeah. But it this is This whole list here is, is fascinating actually. So their the list they consider playlist diversity, recent maps and modes, and trying to put you so you play more different maps in a row so that you're more engaged because you're getting a more variety variety experience. That's sure. cool. Map voting does hinder that somewhat, but it's a very popular feature amongst the community. Sure. Well, it's interesting because, right, so we talked about on this one um, things like they were, they talked about like an ELO to, or, sorry, these guys talked about, sorry, so what I'm saying is each one of these um, criteria, playlist diversity, um, input device, yada, yada, these, each one of these probably had its own series of studies and papers written about them. Most definitely, yeah. Yeah. The input device one I find interesting because I get mesh left and right, controller, keyboard, and mouse. There doesn't seem to be much of a rhyme or reason. There definitely is here as they talk about using it, but I'm curious how it's used and how well they actually determine that's affecting your play positively. Yeah. Platform's yeah. an interesting one. Console can turn off crossplay, PC cannot. In Black Ops 6 and recent CODs. So if you're on Xbox, you can play against just Xbox. You can avoid the mouse and keyboard nerds, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Well, if you're I... on PC, you get the full full spectrum of people on controllers with auto aim tracking you through walls and around yeah. cover. Isn't that funny? Yeah. And I feel like it's going to ebb and flow too as different technologies come out, like um, snap tap trigger uh, uh, keyboards, right? That's something you can't you. With a controller, you cannot change direction that fast. You probably will never be able to change direction that fast with a, um, with a joystick, right? No. So not well, or a very, very, very small subset of players will be able to. And that's not me. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's like forever going to be a you know you're playing on console and you see somebody jitter strafing ridiculously fast and you're like, well, that's stupid. They're on PC, and then you're on PC. And you get, you know, aim assisted. It's just like clearly like they had, you know, locked onto you as you were running by a doorway and hit every shot, you know, zero millisecond, you know, tracking delay kind of a thing, a reaction delay. Um, yeah, I'd be curious if anyone has any thoughts on this who's watching 
drop a comment below on your Black Ops 6 experience, but my take on mouse and keyboard is I feel much more alert. I can turn and look around the map, turn corners so much more quickly. Um, my initial snap aim, insanely better compared to controller. Mm. Sticking to the player on Omni movement, much, much more challenging on mouse and keyboard. Yeah. I also have this weird thing where I feel much more confident on mouse and keyboard because of that initial aim, so I think I play more recklessly. But hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's how it goes, though. <laughs> um, anyway, th so this is... Okay, so... Maybe we should... I don't know if this actually has a lot to go over. Um, maybe we should save this for another episode because there's a lot here. For sure. You could make a podcast series on this paper alone. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, let, let's leave it at that then. Um, but at least this one involving EA that was further back. Um, just, yeah, remember that companies want to keep you engaged. They want to keep you on their platform. They want to keep you spending money. So it's in their best interest to make the game as enjoyable as possible. Um, and to have a battle pass. <laughs> and to have a battle pass, yeah. Okay. It's funny the 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 formulas and stuff here they they look like rather complex if you're just like looking at, if you don't have a STEM background or whatever but I mean this is this is all pretty pretty straightforward right It's very simple functions there's not a lot of variables Yeah Yeah Okay Okay, let's move on to our next topic. We've talked about Tom's Guide already. We uh, Let's go over AliExpress deals. So, AliExpress is having the 1111 sale. Sorry, let me open this here. Yeah, AliExpress is having the 1111 sale. So, their singles day sale. And you can get some stuff for crazy cheap prices, especially if you are incognito like I am and you get the welcome deal. <laughs> But like for example, you get an AJ one seven nine, uh, yeah, the thirty three ninety five for ten bucks shipped. Dude. What I did learn about the welcome deal is if you get a welcome deal, it disqualifies you from the coupon codes mm. for eleven eleven. So interesting. Every time I tried it, it came out even. Yeah, but I mean, Attack Shark X eleven for twelve dollars. Yeah, so. Great deal. 11-11 is Singles Day. It's a bigger holiday in China or Asia, I guess. Um, Met Keys is also having a sale, but theirs is kind of mediocre. 11-11 is just like AliExpress's Choice Days at the beginning of every month where they have coupons. Mm, yeah, so you get like... It, these coupon codes basically end up being around 12 to 15% off your order. Generally, there will be free shipping. And then you pay tax, obviously. Um, import fees, at least here into the U.S., are already like paid up front. It's already bundled into the price. So, um, yeah. You, uh, do you want to go over what what you got? I can search it up. Yeah, I picked up a few things. I picked up uh, the 8K X1 Ultimate. It was in a bundle. It came with the 8K dongle and then a gift mouse pad. Actually, it's the first one there on your left. I believe is the one that I picked up. That's oh. that's it. Yeah. That looks like the listing I picked it up. You never really know here. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting about this, this is the HKX one. It's not the Ultra Pro or Pro Max. It's three grams lighter than the Ultra was. I picked up the yeah, the Ultimate, um, plus or minus. It comes with the 8K dongle. It has larger skates. And yeah. I had an X1. I really enjoyed it. It was it was in the black. Picked up a Viper V3 Pro, so I sold that one. The Omrons, the implementation was a little bouncy and just like really, really loud on that one, which was not something I heard from other people. So I'm curious to try this again. The other thing that drew me to this is there's like a gift mouse pad, which is going to be ATK branded. The two ATK mouse pads we know about that are released are the Kong, which is a zero clone, which is orange or black. And then the 99G, which is, I believe, black or like a matcha green color. So this may or may not be like an Otsu clone, which would really excite me. So um, how we'll do you, see when it shows up. How do you know that this is different from the others? I know it's red here, but that might not if be. If the coloration is true, we're hopeful here. <laughs> There's nothing sure. 
other people have talked about a similar i saw a reddit post talking about a similar thing yeah oh see oh, the sky there... does have a red colorway though so who knows oh okay so sorry so it you said the atk kong. kong is is a zero the sky are the same mouse pad oh okay so the AT atk so again the kong is you said a zero if you read this for listing here it says compare it to zero as well for this guy yeah so there may be a sky coming here. And then the 99G is supposedly a Type 99? It is. Yeah, I've got one. And this price is actually insane. I very much enjoyed it. You got a hmm. static clicking high score in the first few attempts with it. So, hmm. Okay. If you want Arson, 80% of Arson quality at least, you're not going to notice the difference while you're playing. I would recommend the HK mouse pads, to be honest. Okay. And I ended up getting just for comparison, I got I got the cheapest X1. So again, the X1 is basically a Viper V3 Pro shape. Let's actually go on Elo shapes and compare it. X1 Pro, Viper V3 Pro. I believe the sensor position is slightly altered, but I don't know on which, in which direction for which one. Maybe the red's easier to see. So, okay, the ATK scroll wheel's a little bit farther forward, maybe. Grip width seems similar, at least in ELO shapes. Yeah. Omron Opticals. Yeah, so I ended up just getting the cheapest one because I wanted the nano receiver. I don't want the 4K receiver. Um, and you get, with the cheapest one, I'll scroll down to the chart at the bottom. Oh, that if it was beige like that, I would cry. <laughs> um so i got the x1 pro i got mine for um the list price was like 48 dollars, but after coupons and and rakuten 11 percent cash back on 11 11 only it was only like 36 ish 35 ish dollars um yeah, it's a steal yeah every three pro and the performance is very very similar yeah small battery i'm fine with that um, it still has the Nordic MCU and a 3950, so it's going to have good battery life. Well, we'll see. It does have optical switches, which use a little bit more. Same coating, which is huge. Same coating. You don't get that on the lowest model. So, and then smaller skates compared to the Ultimate. So, I, I mean, the Ultimate. If you love the, if you know you love the shape, the Ultimate makes sense. But if you're looking to just, let's say you don't have a Viper. Um, Get this instead. Yeah, seriously. Hard recommend. Okay, what else do you pick up? I uh, grab the Fantech Helios 2 Pro S. And I said it like that for a reason. I recently had the Helios 2 Pro. Um, the coating is per Tabboy Grooves better on the S. Uh, the switches are updated. It's just like a better... The QC was just better all around. Okay. So the shape is an S2 clone ish. It's very close. It's not quite. I used the Helios 2 Pro for a few games in Black Ops 6 and it felt really, really nice. But... Yep. $33.95. Um, the Helios 2 and 2 Pro are both 55 grams in weight, both have a 300 milliamp hour battery. Um, they have Bluetooth if you care. Um, the Pro. The Helios 2 had crazy good prices in the sale. Yeah, the Helios 2, I was tempted. They were as low as about 30 bucks before coupons. The thousand, the 1K hertz, yep. Yep. Now the Helios, yeah, sorry. Um, and do we the have... The isn't listed here. It's not listed here, yeah, you're correct. Yeah. So the 2 and 2 Pro both use TTC opticals, which um, they're not the most desirable optical. They're kind of hollow and thocky sounding. I kind of like them in my Corsair M75 Air, but they're no Armron opticals. Um, the skates look nice on them. So, sorry, you said the difference with the Pro S was... I want to try to find a listing that actually compares them. Hmm... It's got Juano blue shell pink dots. It's got better QC. It's got a better coating. Okay. The S only has a few listings on um, on AliExpress. Okay. Oh, yeah, I found it. I found it here. Okay, and I see the colorway is slightly it's different. transparent blue shell pink dot. Clarify. Yeah, it comes with the 4K strike speed dongle. 
55 grams, it's the same weight, same yep. skates, yep, mechanical switches, so it'll actually have better battery life. But yeah, I mean, the S2 shape, it's a, it's a good shape. To me, it's a little bit too... Kind of boxy, almost. It's it is like kind of boxy, hand. isn't it? Yeah. Kind of like a GPX in a certain way, it's a very safe shape. Okay, what else you get? Uh, the only other mouse I picked up was when you have the Incon G Hero Pro for the coding. Um, what color? And just to re just to recap, I got the Ultimate with the bundle for seventy five. The X One, the Helios Two Pro S was sixty seven after coupons. This is before all the cashback and everything. And then this G Hero Pro in red, uh, just thirty five bucks. Okay. I picked red over orange. I debated for a long time. Yeah. Yellow. I've got the Skyrox. We'll leave that as my only yellow mouse. This is like an MPO one S MPO one kind of mashup mouse, which I believe is a little bit taller, which is what was lacking for me on the MPO one S. So that's what intrigued me here. Yeah. The scroll wheel is is super ugly on these. It's also heavy scroll wheel, but that's what they did. I had both a non pro and a pro. The non pro is a coarse textured plastic like an older razor mouse, and then the pro adds a really nice rubberized coating. Um or not uh yeah, no, that's that is a very nice coating actually. Damn, that is actually a very nice coating. Um, so many of the mice we're going to talk about here could easily make our top five yeah. list that we talked about earlier. This is yeah. one of them. Yeah, so the G this Hero is like off Ambi. Yep, it's not Ergo. It's not Ambi. Yep, um, it's like a stubbier G, uh, stubbier NPO one S. Yeah, like you mentioned. I changed mine to a white scroll wheel. I think they should have just done a normal scroll wheel on these. Their extra five style scroll wheel, I think, is butt ugly. But who cares? I guess I do. <laughs> um, is that is that it that you picked up? The last thing I picked up was 160 Ultra Glide small round ETFE dot skates. Oh, I'll open that. Which I believe I determined these were the ones that were of higher quality because I got some full pad size ones for the Skyrox and they were nice. Okay. So they had like a deal. It was twelve dollars for eight different twenty packs of these skates, eight styles, each twenty pieces there on the right hand side. Yeah, so dollar dollar fifty each. Oh, um, wait, am I? Do I see the option on here? Well, it's the I, text option on the right side. Yeah, right there. Oh, eight styles each twenty pieces. There we go. Your welcome deal puts that at four dollars, which is whoa, that's nuts, absurd. Yeah, yeah so I off. yours were a dollar fifty a pack. That, yeah, that's about right. That's I know. Bad, yeah. So Ultra Glide on here. Uh, oh, these guys do charge you shipping though. So Ultra Glides, I haven't used before the Ultra Glide branded ones, but compared to other AliExpress sellers, these look the same as some ones that are sold cheaper. Um, I'll be curious to know what you think of them. I do think it Most... is important to have fight. Like, there are way too many dot skates on AliExpress, and they all use the same stock images. So you buy the ice version from seller A, and then later you buy the ice version from seller B, and they're a different skate. One is nicely rounded, the other one is not. Your best bet is to find a Reddit post that talks about a specific seller and has a review of it. Yeah. But I mean, that's not easy. I've done trial and error just because if you get the really cheap ones, you can get choice ones that are like 80 to 90 cents. And I'll just get like two at a time. <laughs> so I have, I have literally like a, like a quarter pound bag of dot skates. <laughs> and yeah, I yeah, found these, my sellers. These for me were a good deal, assuming their quality is desirable just yeah. in comparison to what I paid for a, even like the x-ray pad mystery box, which is, to be fair, a good deal as well. The pictures make these look glossy. I know most of these ship with a film on them, so make sure you take that off. It can be tricky to get off. Part of me wanted to put on skates with a film and just see how I performed out of curiosity. Ooh, can we see what serial number this guy's final mice are? <laughs> Bummer. Okay. That's it for me, though, from AliExpress. Which, okay, out of the three, so you got G Hero Pro, you got an X1 Ultimate, and you got the Helios 2 Pro S. Which one are you most excited for? X1 Ultimate. I've had all three shapes before. Go figure. 
Oh, but, really? Yeah. yeah, that's well, that's right. You said, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the X1 Ultimate coating was so good. The shape is great. It was amazing in Fortnite, so. So, I already talked about, from my list, I got an ATK X1 Pro, the cheapest one. I also got, um, I'm pretty excited for this one. I got an ETK F1 Leviathan. Yeah, I got this one. I've had the Pro Max and the Ultimate version of this. Whoa, all this three? Is, this is the extreme. Oh, this is the extreme. Yes, yeah, so it's the lightest weight. It's 35 grams, like plus or minus 3 grams. So it's really going to be 38. But I got this one just because it was blue and because I was able to get a bunch of coupons with it. But it's Amron Opticals. Um, bummer that it has an 8K dongle. I just want a nano, nano dongle. The ice coating, we'll see. But apparently it's stupid light. If it's 35 grams, that's nuts. Looks like a really nice shape. Pretty safe, pretty flat size with big old comfort grooves. And it's like Viper Mini adjacent. And it's the same as shape as the Hitscan Hyperlight. Yeah. Well, the Hitscan apparently is slightly refined, but yes. Yes. I talked to someone yesterday who I sold my um, Ultimate to, and he said he has a Hitscan, and this feels worlds better, which is an interesting take, because really? I've heard the opposite on YouTube. I have. So. so I'm very excited about this one. My and... hope is you don't like it and you want to sell it to me. <laughs> I know the blue is the blue is very nice, but they're it gonna look come... so good. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna come out with something else. I do kind of wish they did a white scroll wheel, but hey. And the last mouse that I got was Attack Shark R2. So this one, the Attack Shark R2, it is the magnesium version of the Attack Shark X. Is this the color where you got as well? No, I'm holding it up right now. Yeah. Sorry, I realize in the stream that my camera might my, our faces might be covering some of them but i got the purple and blue colorway because why would you get anything else it's yep. the same shape basically as the attack shark x3 which is already a shape that i love my only beef with it is the build quality it just feels very cheap and plasticky um i've swapped the switches in my copy like five times trying to get a better click feel and yeah I just, there's only so much you can do this the r2 use i'm around opticals um yeah after i tried yours daz i was like oh i want this and you're not selling yours anytime soon so no the implementation of the i is very good so crisp it, it might be second to the maya x honestly yeah at least on my copy that's impressive especially with a magnesium mouse you can see they did same thing as WL mouse where they put the mounting for the because when you bend these triggers you're literally bending a fulcrum in here and they're mounting it way the heck far back here you know my WL mouse if you shake it the buttons rattle and that that's that's mouse on a mouse too but that's because they're making it nice and loose so that when you click down you're not having to bend metal you're only pressing down on the switch and it looks like they did the same thing here so Good My on thoughts them. on this mouse, you can fingertip it comfortably, you can claw it comfortably, aggressive or relaxed. It's a bit small to palm, but the yeah. click implementation is great. They've got like larger skates that are better than what you would expect from Attack Shark, which is how the whole mouse kind of feels. They're, they're like slightly rounded. They're not the best skates, but they're definitely passable. It just feels great. Okay. It's here's, very safe. Here's a question now that I am um, have my hands on the X3. So a lot of mice, the comfort grooves are the deepest and the most comfortable if you grip really far forward. Personally, I don't do that. I grip more like right next to the scroll wheel. My X3, the comfort grooves actually don't extend like all the way down. They stop a little bit short where they're the deepest is right next to the scroll wheel. So I actually really like that. Where would you say the comfort grooves are on the R2? It's the same as your X, how you described your X3. X3 beautiful the oh. deepest right next to the school wheel. yeah maybe i'm the most excited over this a freaking attack shark <laughs> mouse man it, it's too good for attack shark they kind of knocked it out of the park yeah i'm also a psycho so i grip all the way up on the viper v3 pro and i get the full <laughs> comfort group experience so. yeah yeah so that's everything i got i was also eyeing um a few other things but i think i'm mostly gonna just get some other I think I'm going to get some other like soldering and other modding components. So actually that's something I will highlight real quick. Um, if you, any of you guys are getting into modding or mice or whatever, 
and you're looking at AliExpress, check out getting a precision scale. So this one, I can get a jewelry scale, 0 0.01 gram accuracy. These are welcome deals. My price is showing more about five bucks. You can also get these on Amazon for around $10. This is the exact one I have, and I love it. The buttons feel good. It comes with a cover that the cover you could also just flip over, tear the scale, and then pour something into it. Um, it has an auto off, so if you leave it on, it doesn't drain the battery. The battery uses, I think, AAAs. Um, and it's a nice wide surface. These little itty bitty ones, don't get these. Your mouse overhangs the sides and it's annoying. But yeah, for like five, like people who go spend like $25 instead of glass skates, dude, if you care about weight, get a skate. If you don't care about weight, then that's fine, you know. But if you own multiple mice, it's nice. I will say I have a scale back from my Amazon FBA days, and it's actually most useful to know how much my packages I'm shipping weigh so I can pay the lease for shipping on PayPal. <laughs> yeah. And do I have anything else? Um, yeah, dot skates are good from AliExpress. There's a ton of options. Um, even x-ray pad sells theirs. So the welcome deals on these are really good. Otherwise, they're pretty much full price. Okay. Yeah, I guess you Unless you're bundling them for a coupon code, then coupons, go for it. Yeah. Yep. And, oh, note, the coupon codes can only be used once. So you can, if you're trying to get that $12 off $90 coupon, you can only do it once. Um, yeah, a scale and... How about this? You want to cut up your base like phalanges for three grams? Get yourself. Well, uh, you know, how mutilate your baby. Mutilate, <laughs> mutilate your baby. Your mouse. <laughs> that was phrased poorly. <laughs> yeah, no, mutilate your baby. I like it. You can get these wireless ones that actually aren't terrible. Um, you will want to make sure that you get an end mill bit. So uh, these probably all you. I own three. Okay, I got a Phalanx one from Amazon. I don't want to get too much into the weeds here, but I got a I got a cord whatever. I got a cordless, I got three cordless ones, I got a Rusty, I got one of these Jang Lifes. They all seem to be the same power. What you need to make sure you get is a they accept eighth inch bits. You'll want to get an eighth inch end mill bit. So yeah, I got like an assortment of end mills like this. End mills just mean it, it's it allows you to cut in a in a path, right? Instead of just drilling a hole, it allows you to cut in a path like a uh, like a file or something. So, and I would opt for the smallest ones. That way, when you get into a corner, you get nice and tight into the corner instead of having a larger radius. And then make sure you get one that has multiple pieces because you bend it funny and that snaps. You want to have a replacement, but these are super cheap. You can, I think, I got a pack of end mills. Uh, this I did not pay this. I got a pack of end mills for probably like three or four bucks. I feel like if there's something random you're about to buy and you might just go to Walmart for it, but you're already buying a mouse on AliExpress, see what they've got. Yeah, shipping. How long has the shipping been for you to typically? Two to three weeks, give or take. Same, two to three weeks here. We're both in Eastern U.S. It usually um, arrives the day I get my $1 late delivery coupon, which I'm cool with. Yeah. Yeah, so $1 late delivery coupons are exactly what that says. However, you can only use one per order. And it's, yeah, yeah anyway. Um, any other AliExpress tips for people who might be shopping? I have. If you look at an item and put it in your cart, the store will often message you with a store-specific coupon if you're not in, like, a choice day setting. So, so, for example, let's look up. Um, so first of all, you don't want to shop for Lambsu mice on here. Let's look up. Uh, anything flagship, anything brand name. Yeah. Well, Maybe WL mouse, they are a little They're bit cheaper. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's say you want a WL mouse. Okay. And I want a purple Omron light switch. Yep. So you add it to your cart, and then. Um, when you're in the phone app, their website, their phone app's actually pretty good. You'll have notifications and you'll want to go to your message center and yep, sellers will have a coupon code that you can click get now. Otherwise, 
Um, to bypass that, you can actually just click on this coupon link here. These are all the like 12% off codes. Here's the here's the store codes in beige here. So this one, you just hit collect. Oh, I'm not signed in, but collect and I get three two ninety five off of that price. Um, yeah, obviously. You and you can collect all of them and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, good point. Use coupon codes. Yep. Um, for people who are concerned about like, oh, are they just gonna ship me not what I actually bought? AliExpress, I've had good. I've done probably about I don't know ten, fifteen orders with AliExpress. I've had had problems. Um, I've only had to get AliExpress involved once, and it was pretty much that they wanted me to do a funky. The seller messaged me wanting to do a funky refund thing. I posted to the AliExpress subreddit. They were like, "Nope. Um, here's what you do." You let you let it expire. You don't ship anything back to them. Yada yada. After it expires, AliExpress like forces the money back to you. I did that. No problems. So AliExpress is a bit like Amazon. They want it to be a reliable storefront. They want people to trust them. So they step in all the time. Um, if something bad happens, leave a review on the store. Help help the next person out. Yep, that's true. Yeah. So you can go down to the. They, they kind of hide it, unfortunately, but, like, so this store has zero feedback, and it's kind of a garbage name, so. You'll also see High Bear 3C store, High 3C Bear store, 3C High Bear store. People will try to knock off more reputable stores. Yep. Yep, High Bear store, I bought from one of them. <laughs> also be better than me, leave positive reviews as well, because that's what I'm looking for, to identify a good seller, so. Sometimes the reviews are surprisingly good too with like pictures and such. Yeah. But yeah, I guess I guess if you're if you're skeptical about AliExpress, um I I wouldn't be too concerned. I would give it a shot. Just just make sure the store actually has some reviews. Um I think that just about does it. So There were some good Mad R deals as well, if you're looking for that mouse. Possibly a top Budget China Mouse recommendation. End of story. Yep. They do have their daily deals, which are their super deals, which are limited time. Also, AliExpress has an algorithm. Like you can see, I've been searching for rotary tools. So now they're that's what's in my feed. 99 look, cents, dude. Look at that, uh, that uh, bed reader mount there. You see that thing? This? My wife, my wife just purchased one of these and she loves it. <laughs> really? <laughs> You're feeding the baby. You're reading your book. That's true. It's just I was hilarious. This popped up. Yeah. I just I don't know. I just think like Wally, you know, like I sedentary understand. lifestyle, and you have arms that bring things to you. I don't know. Um, yeah, VXC Mad Eye. Yeah, I've seen them for as low as around thirty some dollars. Which it's a it's a good mouse if you want Omron Opticals, like forty ish gram weight. Yeah. The thought process between getting the Mad R, we'll talk about the Mad G in a second, and the Mad R Plus was that the Mad R Plus was a second iteration. You had a better chance to not get uh, an uneven base. That was not the case with me. I got the Mad R Plus, and the base is not entirely flat. It wasn't right. egregious, but yeah. that's the one you have right now. <laughs> yep, sitting in my. I I played a played a played a little bit with it, and then put it back in the box. Disinfected it, put it back in the box, and. Maybe I gotta ship it to you at some point. <laughs> yeah. Mad G is the Maya X ish. Yeah, the Maya Mad G. Maya G. The Mad I've G. I haven't seen a review yet, but I haven't either. I'm gonna hold off just because I, if I want a Maya X, I got one. You know. Oh yeah. Pack the mouse. Okay. Are we are we wrapping it up here? We're almost at two hours. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think we have we have more um, items to go through, but I think they're not important, so we'll go over them next week. So, with that, do you have anything else to add to AliExpress? No, well, we covered it pretty thoroughly. Okay, cool. Well, with that, thank you guys so much if you've made it this far into the podcast. Um, if you have any feedback as to things you would like to see us do differently, topics you are interested in that you want us to cover, uh, please leave comments down below. We would love to engage with you guys. 
And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you.